Hello, welcome everyone. It is October 28th, 2020. For a quick introduction, my name is Jacob Coughlin. I go by he, him, his pronouns. I am the Midwest District President. I am from the Epsilon Omega chapter at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. There's a cool photo of me doing lean back. Um, I, my primary instruments are, I guess, drum major, if you can consider that an instrument, and baritone slash euphonium. I am a business management major and a senior. So there's a little bit about me. Um, a few ground rules for today. Please stay muted unless you are actively talking. Um, if you have to step away from your computer for any reason, that's totally cool. Just mute your screen so that we don't get distracted by what's going on in the background. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to either interrupt me or just type it in the chat. Taylor, since I can't necessarily always see the chat, if there's a question that I don't answer for a while, would you mind letting me know? Cool. And then, yeah. If there'll be lots of times during this presentation, I'll ask for your guys' thoughts input. If you would like to, just use the raise hand feature, or honestly, this group is small enough, you can probably go to just unmuting yourself and talking. Or if you don't feel comfortable talking out loud, totally cool, just type your answers in the chat and I'll probably read those out loud. Sound good to everyone? Sweet. So, quick roadmap. We're gonna start off with just talking about some general communication concepts and information. This will give us the opportunity to kind of have a similar level of base knowledge as we continue our discussions throughout the night. We then talk about communication in the abstract, so big brain moments. And then we'll kind of focus back in on like specifically chapter communication, what can we do to improve that? So starting off with just a simple definition, this is from like dictionary.com, so very official. Communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, language, or behavior. I think one of the biggest things to point out in this is the symbols, signs, language, or most importantly, the and behavior. That part kind of acknowledges that not all communication is either written or spoken. There are things, nonverbal communication, that would, could be addressed within there. So, my screen is one behind. Can everyone else see the definition or no? Curtis, are you, oh, okay, cool, sounds good. Um, sorry about that. So yeah, general definition for us to be working with as we continue on discussing through different concepts. Next, try to see if I do this. Communication misconceptions. Effective communication requires strong verbal skills. That is not entirely false. However, it's important to acknowledge the fact that there are two sides to communication. There's both the ability to speak and also the ability to listen. As well as verbal skills are not necessarily required, people can be perfectly effective communicators through written as well. Another one, sharing information is the same as communicating. This is an interesting one because as I was reading through these, I was like, uh, yeah, they are. Read the explanation, you're like, interesting concept. They define sharing information as more of what I am doing right now. Currently, I have information that I am just telling you. There'd be no difference between me talking right out loud to my computer versus talking to you. I am just giving information. They define communicating as the ability for you guys to respond. So when I can see your faces, I get nonverbal communication back. There's where that mis misconception lies there. Good logic makes for good communication. Now, from my point of view, I wholeheartedly support this. I wholeheartedly support this fact. If it makes sense logically, why doesn't it make good for communication? Logically speaking, this works, so why shouldn't it work? And that's more of just pointing out the fact that emotion will always play a fact into, sorry about that. Emotion will always play into how people receive your information. Being able to tell someone two plus two is two is perfectly fine. If you're, for example, if you're telling a first grader two plus two is two, fact, logic, I communicated, that should make sense. If the second grader is frustrated because they don't know what that means, there's where that lack of communication could come in. So there's an interesting fact to look into. Um, the next one is in quotations. If I'm not communicating, I'm not saying anything. That um, also goes after almost every mom's typical. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. While that's not horrible advice, what it doesn't acknowledge the fact of 
If someone is talking, whether you say something or not, you are most likely communicating something. Number one, through body language and how you react to what they're saying. Number two, even just the fact of not saying anything, if someone says something, also says what you're thinking. So more of especially in, I'm going to use the word hostile situations or uncomfortable situations through discussion, typically more known as argument. If someone yells at you and says, I believe this, and you just stand there, don't say anything, it can be implied that you believe the opposite. And then finally, the any problem can be solved with effective communication. This one was also interesting as I was reading through and doing some research on this because typically speaking, especially like parents and things like that say, or even in chapter meetings, people always say, it'd be better if we could just communicate more. Our chapter wouldn't have this problem if we just communicated more. In particular, this usually comes up with, our chapter would be better if, I think you guys call them an officer corps, if our officer corps communicated with us more. I would agree with the statement that most problems are improved by effective communication, but what sometimes just isn't considered, sometimes people will just disagree and that's okay. That is just a statement of fact, no matter how well you communicate, no matter how often you communicate, sometimes people just don't agree and that's important to know. So moving on, we're gonna have communication in the abstract. I'd like you to take a minute to think of a mental picture, mental picture, an action, visual, et cetera, that describes communication in your opinion. You should be using actions and adjectives, not necessarily a definition type word. So you're looking more of the opposite of what dictionary.com said and more of an idea that you can tie communication to. You can take a second to think and once you have one, feel free to either put it in the chat or if you'd like to unmute yourself and say it out loud, that is totally okay too. I think of um, a model that I was taught like in communication classes showing the different arrows that go like at each other and there's ones that go around and it's like talking about how there's it's called noise so there's lots of different factors and not just the two communicators and then there's also an arrow for the channel so like what you use to communicate impacts it as well but yeah. Does anyone else have anything? You're not required to. I'm not going to wait till we're all done. But if someone would like to share something, you're totally allowed to. Cool. Seeing none, I'm going to give another example. Taylor's was great. However, another thing that I kind of, as I was thinking, communication in the abstract is the idea of the egg toss game. And I was trying to tie something to what is communication. Because when I started this, I was like, let's talk about the communication theories. And that's when I started researching. This is about a month ago. I started researching, like, what are the different types of communication theories? Random fact of the day, there are hundreds of different communication theories. And that's when I was like, this is incredibly complicated. Why do people make this so complicated? And the answer is people who spent seven years in school decided to make it complicated. So I decided to try to find a way to make it less complicated to understand. And that's kind of the communication in the abstract. Egg toss game. The idea that one member uses both physical and verbal cues to show their teammate when they're going to send the message, our egg, and the ability for the second team member to receive the message, encode the message, and give a message back. So that's kind of a very just simple way of taking it out of the, or not map, but taking it out of the school, taking it out of the academic view, and putting it into more of like a real life application type view. Now we're gonna kind of start to work our way into chapter communication and conflict. So for here, I just have a few important points that I think a lot of us forget as our chapter starts to get a little bit more heated. The first one is every brother is only trying to do what they believe is best for the chapter. This was something that I wish someone would have told me much sooner in my fraternal career because I spent a lot of time being very mad and the honest answer is for no good reason. These, a lot of these other points come to it, but the simple answer is for any good brother of our chapter, and most of the time, any time a brother is willing to participate in communication, most likely means they're a brother who at least cares about the chapter. 
Whether or not they agree with how you want to do it, they are still most likely trying to accomplish a similar goal, which is we want our chapter to improve or we want our chapter to improve in X. So being able to acknowledge that while you may not agree with what they want, they still want something that they think is good. It is the idea of putting yourself in their shoes, but that's something you hear all the time, but the idea of we're both trying to accomplish the same goal. is something that's helpful to know. Kind of feeding right into that point is just because another, or just because your brother has a different opinion doesn't mean they're attacking yours. That's very hard because typically, like, especially if you're the one that raises my hand, you'd be like, I think this, for example, your chapter is trying to come up with a service project. I sit here and raise my hand and say, I think we should make bell covers for the marching band. And someone instead goes, raises their hand again to throw another idea. I think we should provide a reception after the wind ensemble concert. Those don't have to collide with each other, but with the way most chapters interact, it becomes an opposing view. Now people need to pick one or the other. Just kind of acknowledging that they don't have to be opposing. They could be joint or they could be together. They're not attacking your view. Um, another just important point, and especially when you're in conflict, is trying to find the happy medium between sugarcoating things and being rude. There's a lot of people pleasers in this world and there's nothing wrong with that. I myself am sometimes a people pleaser, I'll own it. <laughs> However, there's times where you're trying so hard to be nice. First off, it doesn't mean anything because it's exactly obvious what you're doing. Number two, your message gets hidden by all the sugar behind it. On the opposite side, you don't wanna be the person that says, hey, screw you, your idea sucks, we're doing mine instead. So when you're working on being the communicator, finding a happy medium, is important to be able to effectively communicate it without effectively communicating it too much is what we'll use for that terminology. Finally, another important thing is ask questions if you don't understand. Multiple times, and especially chapter arguments, people pick their side fast and they won't listen to the other side. They decide their opinion is right and there is no other side. However, through most of the time, especially if you have a good person leading your discussion, you can start to realize this person doesn't necessarily even disagree with what I'm saying, or even these aren't that different. But if you don't ask those questions, you don't know that things aren't that different. So when it comes down to it, 99% of brothers, in my personal opinion, 99% of our brothers are really great people, really deserve to be there. So hypothetically, we should be able to come to agreements, but very often we don't. And the answer is typically it's because someone didn't understand something fairly simple that could have been answered through a question. So keep these four points in mind because coming up now, we get our hypothetical situation. Hypothetical situation. This is our activity, by the way. Hypothetical situation. Your chapter accidentally hands out a bid card to a potential membership candidate. After the potential MC accepts the bid, it is discovered that the MC was actually voted no in the bid meeting. What do you do? This is a hypothetical situation that may have happened at a chapter in the Midwest district over the last two years. So, so for a little more clarification because I happen to know what happened. Sometimes it's not great being a district VP. Anyway, <laughs> what happened was basically whoever the secretary was took the wrong minutes and they had a list of people who the chapter voted yes to the chapter VPM looked at the minutes and said, great, I'll give everyone on this list a bid. Little did we know, the chapter secretary messed up. And that's the T. So at this point, you guys have the opportunity. We were going to break on to break up through, so we definitely don't need to because of how small it is. You guys have the opportunity to discuss what would you do. Floor is open. I'm going to mute myself, and I'm just going to listen. What would you guys do? First, I would panic. I was so stressful. <laughs> um, probably call an officer meeting um, and just run it by everybody, like let everybody know what happened, ask for advice on how to handle it, and then depending on the consensus, which I think would just be like um, kind but upfront with that individual and approach them as soon as possible. 
and just explain the exact situation and apologize and take responsibility for the mistake. Okay, I'm gonna add one more sub question to that. The original question still poses, would you let them keep their bid, yes or no? Oh, probably no. That's my gut reaction. I hate hypothetical situations. Well, it also depends, like, how how close, you know, like, was it, like, every single person in the chapter voted no? Or, like, was it half and half? Because, like, I sat in this position where I was, like, putting bids and, and like, I was, like, oh, my gosh, what happens if I give someone a bid that doesn't have it? So it comes from that. And it's, I guess, the point, like, trying to explain to the person if it was that, like, there was, like, a significant reason, like, explain to them what had happened but like also like apologize and say like say we like we do would eventually would like you back or like try to talk to them about why they maybe like not like give away like what was mentioned but um try to give them like encouragement or something so you know they're not like completely crushed especially if they were super excited like um and even like maybe extend like your hand, like if they don't want it, that's fine. Apologize, extend your hand and be like, hey, um, I can kind of work with you if you want. So um, that the next time you come back, um, you like, you may like, yeah, I wish I could talk. Um, when, like, if you want to try again uh, next semester or next year, um, I can kind of, like we like that like whoever like the VP or like any any officer can like kind of point them in the right direction if it's something that like you know they could be good but you're just not sure um it's just the problem with the hypothetical situation because what happens if it was just like a situation where people didn't know the person and they abstained and so that person didn't get like the votes because you didn't have people that knew anything you know it kind of makes it like how how was the vote and what was the reasoning behind the person, which is thinking so much into it. All right. Well, I'll add some I'll add some clarification to make the discussion even harder. Um, for starters, this chapter didn't understand how abstaining worked, so keep that in mind. So there's a there, this ended up being a lot of problems. They came with one simple problem, and we noticed like 16 more things. However, at the time, the way the chapter so according to the national constitution, an MC passes the first round vote unless there is a 25% or more vote, more vote of no. So for example, if there's, oh, I gotta you pick an easy number for me, 100 people. If there are 100 people, if 25 vote no, they don't get in. 25 or more vote no, they don't get in. If 24 vote no, they do get in. That's hypothetically how it's supposed to work. Now, abstentions are supposed to be taken completely out of that. So if there's 100 people in the chapter, and fine, there's 120 people in the chapter, and 20 abstain, you're only counting out of 100 then, yes or no's. That's how it's supposed to work. This chapter counted abstains as a part of, I guess, their no process. So if you abstained, it was basically a no. Effectively, that wasn't quite what it was, but if you abstained, it was basically a no is how the chapter interpreted this. So what actually happened was only one member voted no, but enough other members abstained that they didn't reach the 75% yes rate. So therefore, technically, only one person didn't want them in the fraternity. Everyone else, most of the rest of the chapter abstained because they didn't know anything. So at that point, does that change your answer? That like completely changes my answer. Um, first of all, that is some pretty big confusion to be happening with how abstentions work. Because yeah, that's something we've talked about lately. Like. Nikki's been kind of harping on with the chapter getting as many people to go to recruitment events and like engage 
so that nobody had so we don't have a lot of abstention so that we really know our like possible candidates um but yeah that that does change the situation for me so do you say yes or do you say no to the member they've already accepted their bid yeah if it was we did the vote wrong then yeah i would then i would give it (laughs) or leave it with them would anyone else like to weigh in yet i think if it was a lack of not knowing the candidate and they went ahead and accepted the bid you can you can let them still go through the road to wisdom and kind of get to know them better before you fully admit them in that's the way you could swing it if you just truly had a large cha- or a large chunk of your chapter not know who the person was. But yeah, I think uh, the chapter should take all the, all the blame and all the responsibility for uh, letting the mishap happen. All right, now I'm gonna propose a counter argument because trust me, I don't spend a lot of time with this. Counter argument, how come this member who was voted no gets a second chance, but everyone else who was voted no didn't get a second chance at it? Isn't it unfair to everyone else who got told no the first time? I know some chapters do a second vote. So it would work in the opposite way if you said yes to somebody and then realized, oh, hey, we actually don't want them to vote them out. So I could see it going the other way as well. Yes, I do think it is unfair that all of the... It's weird how only one of the no people got had this happened to and it wasn't multiple it wasn't like all of them it wasn't like all the people you were considering prior to the vote i don't know it's just the beauty of human error i guess indeed it was i feel like potentially if you did the whole process wrong you would just have to redo it again correctly because now do you remember what the percentages were for the rest of the no's and the rest of the yeses, I feel like you would potentially have to redo it to get no. that fairness. Yeah, this is making me wonder if we should be like keeping track of every single vote, what the the numbers are. Because then after that situation, it would be really helpful. Like, yeah, because if they, if the process was done wrong for a lot of people, then yeah, you almost do need to like, I don't know, because there is like a bad part of me that's like (laughs) weeping under the rug. We'll do it better next time as to not make an issue where there doesn't have to be one necessarily. Well, it's a big PR issue. How many people want to join a chapter that doesn't have their shit together? Stuff together. Sorry, I'm being recorded. (laughs) Um. So yeah, so there is a part of me that would dwell on like, do we just do we keep this contained and people not find out? But the um, the other side of me like would want to redo everything, be completely transparent. That's rough. <laughs> if you redo everything, then you go from like, you know, this one person you had to talk to to now every single person you sent a bid out that, hey, we have to redo this process of voting. And now it's, oh, it's even worse. And you open yourself up for the potentially awful opportunity is what if someone barely passed the vote the first time yeah. and didn't pass it the second time. Yeah, and it's the thing, and that's when you can um, do the thing um, because it's, I don't know which set of bylaws it's in, ours or national, but it's in there that if you, if during the, that kind of vote, if someone's voted no, you can bring them up one more time in that meeting to try the vote again. So I know that that instance, like, I would definitely be like, you know, like, if we had messed up doing that, like, double check for the people that got no, um, you know, to double check that again to make sure the vote is, you know, correct. And using that part of bylaws and constitutions to... <laughs> reinforce um that so we can be really sure we know exactly how the votes go we really double checked ourselves so for reference as you can see 
this chapter was down and most of the time frustrations stem from being put in impossible situations and different people's opinions of impossible situations just because i am sure you are now incredibly interested in what actually did happen i will reveal not who, which chapter or when it was but basically what happened for this chapter was as i said secretary took the minutes wrong great vpm looked at the list of people who got yeses sent all of those out the vpm then actually got a message from another brother that said hey my friend just told me they got a bid but i remember they were voted no because they were my friend and i wanted them to get in basically so now they're like what are we supposed to do the chapter took a vote within the within the like officer corps first and said what do we think we should do the chapter VPM had the opinion of, if it was our mistake that the chapter messed up, we should uh, we should not punish the MC for our mistake. So their opinion was they should get to keep it. That exec member was the only one of that opinion and lost a, it was either like a six or it was whatever to one vote. As you can see, did not go very well. However, VPM, that's that's when I got the email. I got the email from the VPM after they he lost the exact vote. And he was obviously frustrated because he strongly believes in his opinion. Did not go very well. He then convinced the exec board, this is a this will affect how our chapter is viewed. It should probably be a chapter vote as well. And it was like, cool. Sounds good. Valid point. Because he is right. However, whatever happened to the student, if it got out, was not going to go well. And also, the chapter vote went miserably wrong. It was like 15 to like two or something like that. It did not go very well. So they were going to take the bid away. Eventually, the chapter sponsor slash director bands got wind of it and was like, I can't tell you all how to run your chapter because I'm not technically in charge, but y'all are screwing up. And then they took another vote and decided to let them keep it. So that is what ended up happening. However, it is interesting to look at the fact of, as we sat here, all of us had a different gut reaction. Because I will admit, when I first heard of the situation, and I, I heard it and the bits that I repeated it to you all in, because I got them in like separate emails. So I purposely like, I actually went back and read the emails. So I purposely like gave it to you in the splits. And I had a, from the very beginning, I also had a very strong personal reaction of, if it's the chapter's mistake, the chapter owns it. So it's interesting to hear Taylor flat out just say, no, they don't get to keep it. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> and once again, it, but it shows some of those points. Taylor does believe she's doing what's best for the chapter. And so do I, our hypothetical chapter. I'm not in your guys' chapter, but in our hypothetical chapter, Taylor does believe what she was doing was best, but it doesn't mean that she's wrong or I'm wrong. That's kind of supposed to show some of the points into how it could affect and how some of these situations come up and how easily it is to take things personally. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I even took it, even giving this presentation, I took it a tiny bit personally and Taylor was like, nah, screw them. So it's just something to keep in mind. Also, I hope you guys appreciate my picture. That was one of my favorite things. I was gonna say, it's a good meme. <laughs> it was a good meme. That was one of my favorite parts. Cool. So now, oh, I need you. I have another question about this. Yes. So what if when you first found out about it, the person accepted, you were told like, the person that we accidentally accepted is known for being like, incredibly toxic, lying, hateful, like all these things, like it's going to be damaging to the chapter, like they are the opposite of our, of like what we stand for. Does that change it for you? Or do you think you're still like, it's our mistake? We got to figure it out. So you're not gonna like my answer to this. Okay. <laughs> However, if your chapter is operating the way it's supposed to, mm -hmm. they are required to take a second vote before third degree. I would say on principle, you have to let them in. So they get to start the membership education process, but you would be looking to fail them if necessary for the third degree, before third ritual. Okay. Now, See, if they prove you, if they know, prove because you wrong. We do not take a second vote. So we have to start doing that. Um, I have a national constitution. 
give me a quick sec to double check that. Okay. I, I know we do. We've we've gotten rid of people before before third degree. It wasn't a vote. Uh, it has happened. I know, like we have the requirements, so we usually do. And if people don't meet those, then we're like, sorry, you don't go through third degree. But yeah, like Taylor said, it's never been a. a yeah, I, but that's a very good. I think that's we should start doing that because you do learn a lot about people through the road to wisdom process. It's, yeah, especially after kind of this last year when like there was an MC that was kind of, I don't know, it seemed like the other MCs were kind of problematic with them. And I was like, maybe a vote would have been good because they literally like dropped out. Like they went inactive this last semester. We have MCs that literally like go inactive the next semester after they are initiated. And it's like, well. Yes, so. It's National Constitution Article 6.505. Does basically read prior to initiation, the membership candidate must receive a favorable vote of 75% of the eligible voting membership and pay initiation fees. Now, there is some very, very small percentage of people that believe, technically speaking, that's what the first one says as well. Because the one right before it is the first vote you take, which is the whole, they have to, or a negative vote of 25% or five members, whichever is greater, makes them ineligible to join. There's arguments that that can technically be the same vote. Technically speaking, because 75 and 25 are technically the same thing. However, general population agree and interpret, they would have to be two separate votes. One typically taken before first degree and one taken before third after second. What number is that again in the Constitution? Uh, it's the National Constitution. It's in the chapter section of it, and it's 6.505. This... Oh, go ahead. Oh, you go. I, it's not about that, so keep going. I was just going to say, there's a slight chance the number changed, because I'm reading the one from 2019, but I highly doubt much was changed. Or 2017, but I highly doubt much was changed, so it's probably the correct number. Cool. Madison. I, this is like my first year as an active and we haven't had a class yet since I'm active. So I haven't gotten to like see this, but I feel like between the time we got our bids and by the time we accepted them was like a good amount of time. So how did that situation happen? Depends on your chapter. I don't know the exact situation of this chapter, but I can say it would have been possible in my chapter we offer bids typically on a Monday of school and they have two weeks to accept it. But typically speaking, 90% of our students accept it within the first 24 hours of receiving it. Cause it's just an email this person if you'd like to accept your bid is how our chapter okay. does it. Okay. So typically speaking within the first hour we have like seven MCs already. Okay, cause how we did it, right? We got like an actual paper bid and then we went to like a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Bid night, that's where yeah. they accept them. It's like show up if you accept. Gotcha. And that's the difference. Ours is an email if. Okay. That I, makes more I don't sense. know what there is, but I would assume probably similar and that would explain. So yeah. Man, if you ever think your chapter has it rough, ask for some stories because I can go off. <laughs> Cool, are there any more questions on this situation? Sweet. Next, just now outside of conflict, some general chapter communication, important points, things to keep in mind. Um, communication does not always have to be from the top down. The largest complaint I've heard from both my chapter and almost every chapter there ever is or has been is our officer corps, our exec team don't communicate enough with us. Almost everyone has said it, and it's a problem in almost every chapter. And the first question I will always ask is, what have you, and it's typically from a regular chapter member. And I will ask, what have you done to improve that? And, and outside of coming to talk to me, what have you done to improve that? And the answer is almost always nothing. People, and it's natural, it's natural. So I'm not accusing anyone because I've done the same thing, but people naturally want to say, it's not right, it's someone else's fault. And the answer is it's probably not the student's fault either, but it doesn't mean you couldn't do anything to help. 
So it doesn't always have to be from the top down. Even as simple as just asking your questions helps chapter officers and especially chapter presidents know what's not understood. Because I spent my first year as a chapter president last year and I didn't realize how incredibly frustrating, and Taylor's gonna nod and like snap her fingers. It's incredibly frustrating not knowing what people don't understand. You just never, you talk a lot and everyone just sits there and you're like, especially right now it's probably awful online too. You just sit there and you're like, I hope people understand. So that's just something that could be helpful. Um, the next two are fairly similar, but what happens in chapter meetings stays in chapter meetings. That is both when someone else says something and in particular, like on big things like on chapter elections and MC processes, if someone votes no to a person inside the meeting, you can't say, hey, Jimmy, Alex said you shouldn't be in Kappa. So both opinions and also for the drama that's created within it. Typically speaking, drama usually comes up during elections and that's when people have discussion on candidates. Did you know this person said this about you? Things blow up. What happens in chapter meetings has to stay in chapter meetings. Otherwise, people don't feel comfortable sharing and there's no point in having discussion. That's, and it's, trust me, is one of the hardest things to say. And I'm sure your chapter struggles with it because every chapter has, but just, you cannot harp hard enough in, and it comes as simple as, if you don't want someone saying what you say during meeting, you shouldn't say what someone else said during meeting. So at that point, there's no point in having the meeting then because no one's gonna feel comfortable sharing their opinion because no one wants to deal with the repercussions that you shouldn't have to deal with if you're brothers. Um, next point is never allow your voice to be the most dominant voice in the room. This is especially true for either like the chair of the discussion or the president, but it's true for everyone in the room. Typically speaking, there's always moments in the chapter where someone who is typically very quiet decides to finally speak up and their voice is always the most important voice heard during that conversation because they're just, they don't talk often. They choose to use their words wisely. That is very helpful for everyone to keep in mind. Number one, it doesn't allow anyone to run the conversation. Those people, especially people who tend to be quieter, feel more comfortable talking when someone like me isn't talking 24-7. I'm not gonna lie, this point was made because it was one of my biggest weaknesses. I like to talk. I like, I have great opinions, obviously, because they're mine. Why shouldn't I share them? Learned quite the hard way where, and especially like as a chapter president, but as anyone leading a conversation, when you say, I think this is a great way to do this, what do you guys think? At that point, you require someone to say something opposite of what you just said. Instead, starting the conversation with, what do you guys think would be successful? that allows people to give their opinion without contradicting your own. And then finally, in terms of just general chapter communication, conflict and what it means to be a brother through communication. Can you pause it now? If you'd like to talk to me about anything, I'd be happy to answer your emails. Try wanting maybe a little bit, but I'll happily answer emails. Or if you want to Facebook friend me, message me. If you want to look at my incredibly boring Instagram that I post on twice a year, that's always an option. But I'd love to reach out, talk to you guys if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns. Is there anything question-wise that you guys have questions about? Just through what we talked about today so far. I'll leave it open for you guys if you guys have anything you'd like to ask. So one thing you're talking about with um not sharing what goes on in meeting or not, you know, basically the whole gossiping aspect that is gonna, that comes along with leading with your friends. Um, like, so the people in this fraternity, I think for a lot of people are like my family here at school. And it really is challenging to not talk about things, even like, you know, you can like be respectful about people, um, you know, be as truthful as possible, present things unbiased, but it's like just, just not talking about it is really challenging. I wonder if you have any advice, I guess, or anything that you found helpful for not doing that. I'm gonna pull, okay, I'm gonna start off by pulling a super cheesy book from um, Professor Tony Falcone. He's the director of our marching band 
and he's also the national vice president for con or for professional relations for Kappa Kappa Psi. Um, he has three rules for gossip. He was referring to marching band, but it applies to a lot of things. He uses it for Kappa Two. He says, in order to talk about it, it has to pass all three tests. Is it truthful? Is it kind? And is it necessary? If it is not all three of those things, there's no need to talk about it. Easier said than done, <laughs> I will admit. But that is, and when I first heard it, I was like, whatever. I was almost like a sophomore, and I was a freshman because he said it during band camp. He said it during band camp, and I was like, whatever. It's kind of started to resonate with me a little bit. So over time, I think that one grows on you. I've heard it for five years now, keep in mind. But hearing that one six, seven times a year for five years, eventually it does kind of start to stick and you do catch yourself a few times. And in particular, most of the time when it catches you is, is it necessary? That's I think the one that catches me the most. I go, it's not, because I'm like, it's true. And it's not, it's not necessarily not kind. So you can say it, but is it necessary? That's the biggest one where I catch myself and say, you know what, it's not. No matter how bad I want to tell this person, the biggest thing is no matter how bad I want to tell this person, will it make them feel any better? That's a big thing that helps me bite my tongue sometimes. Hey, did you know this person said this about you? It's kind of me to tell them that they said that about them and it's a truthful statement. So I can like finagle my way into saying that, but is it necessary? Does it help my friend to tell them this? That's my cheesy answer for you. Not necessarily always effective, but maybe effective over time. The other answer that I've come to, which I'm not saying is a great answer, but it's been better than not, is focusing on the conversations you have with those who you're allowed to have the conversation with. I get that's kind of vague. I guess what I mean by that is, let's say there's me, my friend Sam, and my friend Ben. Ben is running for president this year. And Sam and I got to be in the room during chapter elections. So Ben was running for president, right? That's what I said. Okay, Ben is running for president. So Sam and I were in the room. Sam and I heard everything that everyone else said about Ben. It is sometimes helpful for me to talk to Sam about it because Sam heard the same things I heard. And while it might be technically gossiping, as long as it stays within Sam and I, it doesn't affect me. Versus when I tell Ben, hey, here's what Adam said about you. That's kind of where those terms start to, that's where you start to break that. But Sam also heard what Adam said, so why does it matter if I talk to Sam about it? That's also been semi-helpful. I'm not gonna call it the most healthy thing in the entire world. However, if something is eating up at you, that is a way that can also help that. It's just getting it off your chest to someone who already knows. And then a lot of times this will also show up with things that exec members know that not everyone else knows. Because that does happen, and it is the nature of the beast. Eventually, it will happen, and that is just the way things are. Instead of talking to Joe Schmo, who happens to be the musicianship coordinator, if you guys have, have one, talking to your VP about it. You may not want to talk to your VP about it, but at least they know about the situation, and you still get to get whatever your thoughts are off your chest. That is something I found that is helpful. It's not perfect. The biggest thing is, does it make my does it make this person I feel better? Because half the time, if I'm telling some if I'm telling somebody something I shouldn't tell them, it most likely means they're my friend. Therefore, I try to justify not telling them by saying, "Will it make them feel better?" I guess that's the best advice I have. Yeah, thank you. It's funny you bring up the the three rules. Um, I put that same quote at the bottom of our agenda every week as like a discussion rule. I think I learned that from like my mom found it on a Facebook post and she was like, this is how you should live, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I'm not gonna lie, it's yeah. super cheesy, but after you hear it enough or read it enough, it does start to kind of sink right. in, just a tiny bit. Yeah, it makes sense. Cool, does anyone else have any questions in general about anything particular? going once and going twice. Cool. Thank you guys for being willing to listen to me. Um, I'm glad I got a chance and thank you Taylor for inviting me and I'm glad I got a chance to come in and talk. <laughs>